welcome back to another Chinese food adventure. I am here in the glorious Guangzhou. Delk and I have been together finishing off our vacation here and we've had a lot of firsts. I took him to his first ever yum cha, which was, wow, what an experience. He was absolutely in love with everything. Everything just perfect. He actually ended up ordering another plate of the, the red chung fen. Or how do you call that again, Peter? By, by hey. the way, Peter's gonna be in this video, spoiler alert. What's it called in Chinese? Hong mi chang. Hong mi chang. Anyway, yeah. hong mi chang. He loved the hong mi chang. It blows my mind. We've also done a lot of exploring around Guangzhou, and this is actually my first time ever being in Guangzhou specifically, purely for leisure. Whenever I've come here before, it's been for an event or like passing through, and I've only had a day or so to like actually explore and sink my teeth into it. But this has been my first time really getting to know the city, and boy, do I love it. So yesterday, Del flew back to Changchun, but I've still got another day here in Guangzhou. So of course, it's time for another food adventure. With, of course, Peter. How could I do a video in Guangzhou without Peter? Long story short, you cannot. So in the last few days I've been here, by far my favorite area in Guangzhou to walk around and explore in has been the Yuexiu district. It's just so vibrant and full of energy, full of people doing their things and so many food places that I just want to eat everything. So today I've asked Peter if you can take me on a Yuexiu food adventure so we can eat at all those local and down-to-earth places I've been seeing walking around. So we are at Xihua Lu in Yuexiu district. More specifically, Xihua Lu is right on the border of Yuexiu and Liwan district. So I guess technically this is also a Liwan food adventure too. This road is full of food. Yeah, full of food and full of local vibe and full of liveliness. And then especially we can see the flower over here. Yeah, they're um, so beautiful. Chinese New Year is coming and then uh, one of the most important things for Cantonese people to do in Chinese New Year is to get flowers at our home. Pretty much any kind of flower for us will be, will be a good wish for Chinese New Year. Okay, time to get this food adventure started. First up is a popular local spot called Zhen Zhen Xiao Shi Dian, where you'll find lots of people lining up, as well as sitting inside and outside, basically wherever there's space. Today, Peter's ordered us this majestic clay pot full of zhu chang fen rice rolls topped with beef and beef tendon. It's gonna be piping hot, so don't burn yourself. <laughs> Oh, the smell is so amazing. It's like quite sweet and it looks like that sauce is going to be so thick and like savory. Oh my goodness, I really want to get into it. Even though you've warned me, it's going to be super, super hot. Well, if you bury yourself, I'm just going to be like, you know what, hashtag sorry, not sorry. <laughs> I'm going in. I'm going in for it. Alrighty. I think I'm just going to go in for a piece of chuchong fin. Like, look at that texture. Look at that sauce dripping off it. Yeah, you have one piece and then I'll tell you the correct way to eat it. Oh, this isn't the correct way? No. Should I wait until I hear the correct way? Just go ahead. <laughs> okay, I'll try this first. Oh, hot. Hot. <laughs> really, really flavorful um, mm -hmm. and quite sweet from that um, sauce, which feels like... I feel like it's been in a pot braising for hours and hours. Yeah. So tell me, what is the correct way to eat this dish? Okay. So the correct way is actually to unroll this thing. Unroll the zhu chong fen? Yeah. I thought that was illegal. It is legal. Well, um, why would they spend all the time rolling it up if you were going to unroll it again? Well, because if you unroll it, this will just like soak in more sauce. Okay, okay, okay. I, I get it now, I get yeah, it now. So if you want a texture, you can eat it just like, like this. Yeah. But if you want to, you know, like have more sauce and have more flavor, you can unroll it. Oh, so it's going to kind of turn into a noodle. Okay, I definitely want to try this out for myself, but it's definitely not as easy as Peter made it look. It's kind of like when you've got like a, a yarn ball and you're trying to find the first like string of the yarn so you can unravel it. I just need to get like a good hold on the first little bit of noodle and then it's going to be fine. Okay, I got it and I'm going to definitely get my money's worth here because I'm just gonna soak that all up in that sauce there. So this is the reason you unwind it, to take advantage of the increased surface area and soak up more of that flavorful sauce. Oh my god, that smell. <laughs> like 10 times more flavor. I think from now on, I'm gonna be unraveling my chunk then. <laughs> Although it does take quite a significant amount of time, but in the case of this dish, it's so damn hot, you really need a little bit of time that you're like investing in unraveling it and then like soaking up some juice and by that time it's like the perfect temperature. Another thing, if you fish to the bottom of this clay pot, you'll find chung fen with a slight char on it. Those are the best bits. Oh yeah. Oh, that's so good. You can also add some Cantonese chili sauce, which is sweet, salty, and not too spicy. And if you want to add even more freshness, feel free to add a pickled radish as well. 
this will be like a great palate cleanser for you, I guess. It's quite a heavy dish, so that chili sauce and those pickles really lift the flavor in my opinion. Now let's try some of that juicy looking beef tendon absolutely smothered in sauce. Mm, really nice texture. A mixture of a crunch when you bite into it, but then it also has like a fatty consistency, but also like a jelly consistency. So it's like got the meatiness of a fattiness, the crunchiness of like cartilage almost, just a little bit, but then you've just got like the jelly. It's so damn good. But yeah, amazing dish. In fact, we loved it so much, it was gone within five minutes. Next, we are going down the street for a little bit, and then we are gonna have shark fin soup. Hot, fake shark fin soup. Here it is here. It's called Wan Zai Chi. Imitation shark fin soup. So I guess this is also a lot cheaper than what actual, you know, shark fin would cost. For 19, if you're really getting a shark fin, you're probably only only gonna get like a piece of shark fin that's the size of like one string of hair. So Peter has gone to collect our shark fin soup. Fake shark fin soup, that's a very important point. No sharks were harmed in the making of this video. I learned this soup came to be in the early 19th century when ordinary citizen wished to eat shark fin soup too, but it was just too expensive. So what do they do? They kind of use the, you know, um, fence or something like that, or something that can give you also the texture and stuff. A lot of ingredients in this. I can see like, yeah. just with my plain naked eye, I can see at least nine or ten ingredients in this, including like dried shrimps. It smells very umami, very salty. Dried shrimps, dried scallop. Bon appetit! Amazing. Mm -hmm. It's super umami, as expected, because it's got all of those um, dried seafood items in there. I really like the texture, actually. It's very hearty and warming. I actually think this would be the perfect thing to have when you have COVID, because it's warm. It's got that like umami, like nutritious vibe about it, but it's also very thick, which I feel like would be really good for your throat when you've got like the knives oh, in, your, yeah, in yeah. your throat. I don't know if you had that symptom. Well, not me. Oh, it, it was hell. It was shit. Yeah. For our next stop, Peter said he wanted to take me for some iced tea. When we turned up to this store, I have to say it's not exactly what I was expecting. I've never been to a tea store like this before. So it seems to be called Liang Cha Cold Tea. So we're having some iced tea here. Is that what this is? No. Okay. It's terrible tea. The best way I can describe this is like tea shop meets pharmacy. So now that I'm paying a bit more attention, I'm realizing that every pot of tea has a different like purpose on it. So this is losing weight tea. This is for the stomach, I guess, the stomach yeah, so. tea. This one is for sick tea, like if you have a, like a cold. This one is for sleeplessness. If you've got insomnia, you can take this tea. This one is if you're a bit, you know, constipated. Uh, <laughs> you basically got something for everything. Yeah, and uh, this one is for, it's for girls problem every month. Oh, that's so nice. So literally everything, any pain or ailment, you can come here and get a tea to help with it. I actually just asked him recently with like COVID being, you know, super serious, everyone is getting COVID right now, has there been an increase in business? And he just was like, yes. <laughs> yes, there was. A simple answer to the simple, very simple question. So this gentleman was asking me a lot of questions. So basically he's trying to figure out like what kind of symptoms I have. I just recovered from COVID and I do have, you know, cough from time to time. Yeah. So he was asking me like, um, like, do you cough very often? What's the color? Do you have mucus? Whoa. What's the color of your mucus? And once he understands more about your health situation, he'll be able to recommend the best tea for you. So we have two teas here. Yep. One is cold, one is the sugarcane tea for yep. me. This one is the one that you were prescribed for your post-COVID cough. So I'm just gonna... Uh, be careful of your white pants. Oh yeah, it's a miracle that they haven't gotten dirty yet. What is happening here? <laughs> Oh wow. It smells like that Chinese medicine that you have when you're sick in like the little bottle with like the little straw. Wow. That is so intense. That's... Do people drink this for pleasure or this is purely just for like recovery? People actually drink this for health benefit. Okay, so you try it. I'm excited to see what you think of that and whether you like it or what. Yeah. Okay, like to be honest, this is not the best flavor. <laughs> Time to try the sugar cane tea, which Peter told me is good for clearing the lungs. Another great post-COVID drink. This one automatically smells a lot more doable. Like it's a, it's not as um, medicine-y as the other one. Oh, that's really nice. Oh, this one I really like. It's like quite sweet in the back of my throat. Uh -huh. Oh, this is so nice. 
See, I chose the better one for you, and then... Uh, You're good to me, Peter. You know what yeah, I like. I, I chose the mm. not as good one for myself. Yeah, no, this is really good. It has a slight medicine-y taste to it, mm -hmm. like an aftertaste, but in general, it's quite sweet. So you know what? If medicine tastes like this, I'm okay with it. So Peter, tell me, how are you feeling almost at the end of this drink? Well, pretty good. At least right now, my throat feels pretty... Pretty smooth. Is this a Cantonese thing or you can find this all over China? It's a Cantonese thing. Well, on that note, let's go find us another very Cantonese thing. Chicken soup served in a coconut. Last time I was here in Guangzhou, Peter took me to a place that serves desserts out of coconuts. So I guess we're continuing on with this coconut theme in today's video. And fun fact, this place has actually appeared several years in the Michelin Guide. So it's also very, very busy. We had to wait quite a while until a seat opened up. We have found a spot, but it is definitely a new dining here. Yeah, it's pretty small. <laughs> I'll take this kind of Michelin restaurant over like a fine dining experience any day. Like I just Same love, here. I just love how down to earth these places have all been today. And like you know, you're eating with locals. There's no pretension. Just good, affordable, everyone food. This looks fun fact, amazing. This one is only twenty three. Okay. Yeah, twenty three renminbi for a Michelin. Quality food, I mean, yeah. The chicken here is very different. You see, it oh. is black. So in case you were not aware, there is another variety of chicken called silky, or in Mandarin, wuguji, that's covered in downy, fluffy white feathers, but has strikingly black skin, as well as black bones. Look at that, black uh, chicken. Just taste like all. That's our chicken. <laughs> now let's try some of that chickeny, coconutty, Michelin-y broth. Oh, that's absolutely incredible. It's, you've got that sweetness, especially in here from the coconut, but you also have like that chicken soup flavor. So you're getting, it's hitting the saltiness on the front of my mouth, the sweetness at the back of my throat. Oh, this tastes amazing. And it's got the goji berries inside as well. Yes. I guess that's very warming for you as well. Is this made with um, the actual coconut oil? Yeah, of course. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah like what would this. be the point, I guess? Yeah, what would be the point to, to do like all the <laughs> Oh, I mean, this is pretty much like the flavor that I remember from, from when I was like five or something. I really think there's something to be said for smaller menus, specialized dishes, and handing down a recipe through generations. I mean, people are coming back here time and time again for a reason. So that brings us to the end of our amazing mm -hmm. USO food adventure for today. I feel like this is gonna be one of those food adventures that people are gonna be coming here to Guangzhou and really like trying for themselves. Once again, please, Round of applause for Peter. You know what? If you like Peter, like this video. That's a show. <laughs> and yeah, as always, guys, don't forget to like and comment, and most importantly, subscribe. It really helps out with my videos and my channel if you can press that subscribe button. And yeah, that'll be it from us. Goodbye from Guangzhou. Bye. Bye. <laughs>